Hey USA families, I'm Jen Rader here with Sophie Post and Peyton DeGraw. These girls just returned from the United States Women's Deaf National Team Camp and we are here to talk to them about their experience. We're so glad that they're here with us. So girls, how about you tell me a little bit about yourself? So my name is Sophie Post and I'm 15 years old. I play for Utah Avalanche and I have for I think like two or three years and I've done ODP for, I did it last year and I absolutely loved it. Um, I play forward and center back, those are kind of weird positions, but I played center back on ODP and I play forward on my club team and I really like, like both of the environments. Um, my favorite activities to do outside of soccer, I love like drawing and stuff and I also love like longboarding and just like getting outside in general, that's really fun. And yeah, that's pretty much a little bit about me. <laughs> Hi, my name is Peyton DeGraw. And I've been playing soccer for about 11 years. I played for Blue Knights uh, soccer team for seven years. I'm 17. I go to Brighton High School. And I play for the school team too. Uh, let's see, what do I like to do outside of soccer? I like to go hiking. I like to go swimming. I like to hang out with my friends. And I just learned ASL recently, like the last two, three years. Awesome. So how did you find out about this camp? So I had a trainer named Amy LaPelvet and she was like at private training one day and we were talking about my hearing loss. And she was friends with Joy Fawcett and Amy and they got in contact with my mom and we started emailing back and forth about the camp and then they invited me to their camp. I found out it from her mom. Um, we met last time at the airport. We were coming home from a tournament and we ran into her mom and her mom told my mom um, about the team. And so we sent an email and then they invited me to go to the camp. Okay, cool. So Sophie, you had gone last year. This is your second year. How were the years different for you? Um, last year, it was just like a different group of people and because not everybody can make it each, to each camp. So last year, it was a whole bunch of different people that were there. And it was just a different experience. We did different team activities. Then this year, like, this year we did like farming and like fun stuff like that. <laughs> and last year, we like helped um, kids in need and stuff like that, which was kind of different than this year. But I think they were both overall really great. Cool. And then Peyton, this was your first year. How did you, how did you enjoy it? Really, it was a cool experience for me because I felt really welcome and people were the same like me and that was awesome and I just felt included. I just felt part of the group. <laughs> Let me think about it. Hold on. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll go to Sophie and ask her, what did you enjoy most about the camp? Um, this year, what I enjoy most about it is when you get on the field, everybody has to take their cochlear implants out or their hearing aids out, or some people already can't hear, and so they're already like completely deaf. But everybody else who has to take it out and has to lose their like advantage that they have, it's really cool to play with them because it's like dead silent on the field, and everybody's moving their arms up and down trying to get the ball, and it's like amazing to watch how we communicate with each other without talking, like just by our signals and like our body movement and just everybody always has their heads up and you're very aware, which is like my favorite part about it. So are you signing while you're on the field? Yeah, so there are certain signs, so like if I was going up against you or something and I passed you the ball and I wanted you to turn, I'd go like this, or if I wanted you to hit my feet. And there are just other things that you pick up on while you're playing. There are some, like it's a lot of eye contact too, so. Some of the girls do sign on the field, but it's really hard because you need to pay attention. So most of them just like look at each other, they like come close, they might say something, and then they'll use their bodies and like point which direction they need to go, which is really cool. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's kind of like hard to communicate with other people because they really don't know sign language, or maybe this group of people really know sign language, or but you're just really interested in like trying to figure out how to communicate. Once in a while you try to talk and you can't, so that could be kind of hard, but you would always find a way to communicate, way to get their attention or to figure out how to communicate. It was really interesting because 
Like everybody was so different and it was so different from the hearing team, you know, but um, it was really hard for me like to figure out how to get the ball on things, but they'd have to tap me and then I'd have to turn, but it was really an interesting experience. So for you, you have, you have keeper gloves on. You're a goalie, right? So when you're signing, do you have to use individual fingers? Did that make it difficult to be able to, you know, point or different things like that? It's hard, but most of the time I would just point or, you know, gesture down or say like, you know, over there. So really, it's just simple signs, you know, really easy. So Okay, that makes sense. And you were talking about if you can hear with assistance, you have to take that, you have to remove that yeah. when you're playing? Uh, and that makes it really hard because some of the girls like me who I can hear a little bit without my hearing aids in, but not very well. I don't know how to sign because my whole life I've had hearing aids, so it hasn't really been necessary for me. I've just read lips. So then the second we go off the field and we take our hearing aids out and the coach is trying to explain something to us, it's really hard because we can't hear them and everybody else is looking at the interpreter and they're like, okay, we know what she's saying, but like me and this girl named Holly, like we don't sign and we can't hear like at all. So that's really hard to communicate with the coaches to find out what we need to do because we can't hear. And when you're used to playing with the hearing team all the time with your hearing aids or your cochlear implants in, it's hard to go from that to where no one can hear you and you can't hear them because you'll be like yelling and be like, yeah, blah, blah, I want the ball but they can't hear you. So it's just like, oh gosh, what is happening? It's hard. It's interesting about that, yeah. So everyone kind of speaks on their own and they have their different ways of communicating and you're all coming together at one place and yeah. trying to make it work on the same team. Yeah, pretty much. Yep, so that's exactly. similar to the different, same. trying to do the same. So similar to the different forms of communication, we're talking about a team that has no age limits. So you could be playing with a girl who is 20 years older than you. What's that like? Um, it's, in some cases it's really hard because, so they're bigger than you and like you get scared because of their age. And like even though age is just a number, it's really intimidating to go against someone who's like 20 or like 10 years older than me. Cause I'm the, there's only one other person younger than me. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's just strange to see like the environment and the girls that have been on the team longer who are genuine, like they're older than all of us. And they like tell us what to do and all this stuff and it's just a different environment playing with these girls that know like what they're talking about. It's like playing with a whole bunch of different coaches on the field, not just like a coach, but then like all of the people you're playing with are coaches and they understand the game like perfectly. And they're so much older than you, so you're like, you look up to them, but at the same time, it's like a competition, like, mm -hmm. can you beat them, even though you're younger and stuff like that, so it's hard. Yeah. And when I first went there, I was really nervous because there was um, one girl that I played with her for years and years, but I thought, oh, wait, I hope, oh, I've watched her play for years and years, and I hope I'm good enough I can keep up with her, and, but it really didn't matter that we just needed to get in there. I mean, Oh, youngest keeper. I'm the youngest keeper. And so, maybe they were 26 or 30 or 22 or, I just had to keep trying my very best. Mm -hmm. The coaches were very impressed and they would tell you to keep going and to, and this is a national team, so we all had to work together. I was really nervous about that though. Do you feel like you learned a lot from the older girls? Um, I feel like I learned a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was... Like... Say it again. Uh-huh. Oh, uh-huh. The older team than us, they, like, that didn't seem to matter. Like, we would all try to play together and be one together. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of the younger girls look up to these older girls that have played in World Cups and played in the Olympics. You're like, you look at them and you're like, oh my gosh, you're like so good and you're so much older than us. But really, it's just how hard they try and like the effort they put into it. Because all of these girls have to like make an effort like to look for us to look up to them and all the stuff they do is 100% all the time. Like 
even simple things like jogging in for a water break, they always sprint, they always get there first. It's just like a good example. A hustling. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what do you think you can take with you from this experience into your own club teams or to high school or to, you know, even just regular life? I think definitely communication and team bonding because a big part of being on a deaf team is you have to find a different way to communicate. And I feel like a lot of like my club team, we lack communication. We always forget to talk. And those are things we kind of take for granted because we don't realize there are other teams like the deaf team that can't talk. So I feel like we need to utilize that and make sure that we're talking more and that we're becoming more of a team together and we're working together. Because we did work on the farm and stuff and that really brought us together because we were working together. So I think the big thing that I took from this camp is being a team and playing together and like always communicating. So we'll, we'll go back to the volunteering because I want to hear more about that. But Peyton, what do you think? What are you going to take with you in the future? I would say the same thing. Like you always have to communicate with my hearing team. Like it's really important for me to always communicate with my team members. Like if they want the ball, um, they're, sorry, like you said, if they want the ball. Okay. Oh, okay. I think on the farm, it was a good experience too. Because we learned that we, we can work together. It's a different kind of work, but it doesn't matter. Whatever you do, you have to work together and communicate. Makes sense. So tell us about this farm. What were you doing? Were you dealing with cows? Were you yeah. <laughs> so, the, so the first day we got there, they told us that at 3 a.m. and one of the days, every one group, so it would be your room. We were in the same room, actually you would get assigned to do 3 a.m. chores. You have to wake up at 2.30 and you have to be there at 2.50 and you have to go do chores on the farm. But first, we were the last group, so the first thing we had to do on the farm was we had to bale hay, and that's really hard. So we had to go, they had a tractor thing, like, I don't know, full hay, and we had to put it up into this loft and we had to stack it in this order. So it has to be like two this way and then two this way. And you have to stack all of this. And it was like really hard to like work with each other, like, okay, you have to throw it to me, I have to like carry it over here, and they're not light. So that was like the first farm thing we did. It was really cool. And the last day was the other thing we did. We had been on the farm, but we weren't doing stuff until like the last day, which was our room. And we got there and she kind of showed us around and we went into the, like the milking place and they showed us how they put so we got to milk a cow, but they don't do that anymore. They use electronic things that like suck on. Hmm. and like pull <laughs> and then after yeah after they showed us that we went and we got to feed the baby cows and we held chickens and we pretty much just had to do what a farmer would do every day but normally <laughs> <So cute. laughs> normally they do it three times a day and we just had to do it once from three to seven I think and we had to go clean out all the water buckets and we had to fill it up then we had to wash all the nipples that we were feeding the baby cows which was my favorite part <laughs> because we got to like hold them because they were only like a day old and they barely could walk and we had to like force them to feed it and it was so like priceless. It was so that cute. Awesome. But we pretty much did like a lot of with the baby cows and we fed the steers like they were outside. And then we just like cleaned all their food and cleaned out the stables and then we were done. But that took so much time and like to think of these people who have been doing it like all the time every day, three times a day, I just could not do that. <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah, bless those farmers. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think that was part of this national team camp then? I think it was team bonding. I think it was really important for us to understand how to work together on other ways than on the field. Because on the field, you need to be friends, but off the field, you need to be friends too. It's all about like bonding and communication, especially with the deaf team. So the more time you spend with each other, the better you understand. Like I like, can understand her perfectly and I can't like, hear what she's saying at all, but that's just because I spent so much time with her and the way that we communicate may be different, but we're still like figuring it out. And I think working on the farm really helped that because we had to be like, okay, hey, hand me this. Like, mm -hmm. I got to rinse it out, then you have to do this. What do you and think it's just a lot of working. <laughs> yeah, the farm really helped us to learn how to work hard. And we had to get things done but at the end, it made you feel really good, like, wow, we finished something together. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That sounds like a 
more than just going to camp. You're learning life lessons, you're learning how to communicate, you're learning a lot of different things that you're going to take, not just in soccer. Mm -hmm. Just tell me, um, and maybe just everyone else who's going to watch this video, what do you guys feel? I mean, you're obviously thriving in your lives, you're competitive soccer players, you're successful. Um, but what are some of the challenges that you want to highlight that you face every day that you know maybe someone who can hear perfectly doesn't understand? I think you know, I know I've heard this a lot, but the biggest challenge is really communication, and it's hard to be on a team with where everybody can hear, and they may be like subbing you off or something like that. They're like trying to say your name, and you just can't understand them. And finally, you get pulled off, and you're like, okay, like you just have to like reset. But it's hard because you can't hear. Like, no, well, obviously you can't hear, but like. You wouldn't think that like not hearing would make such a big impact as it does, but it like really, I don't know how to say this, <laughs> it really like affects the way you play because you're not always, you can't hear a defender running up behind you, you can't always hear your team saying press and stuff, so I think that's like what I learned the most. Yeah, I would say the same thing, communication, because I always have to tell people, ask people, what did the coach say? And my friend really interprets for me a lot and helps communicate, but I always feel a little behind. And if I look away and someone's talking to me, you know, I don't know that they're trying to explain something to me. So when people find out I'm deaf, at first they're, they don't really know how to act around me. Like, what am I supposed to do with that person? She's deaf. But really, I'm just the same. I, we can find ways to communicate. I'm really open for that. Like we can text or we can write or we can do fingerspelling. Um, and I can read some lips, you know. It's not very good, it's not my greatest, but um, there's other ways. That's good that you're finding ways to really work with people and, you know, I don't know if people are uncomfortable, but it's, it's awesome that you're so willing to just be open about it and just, and help those people out, so. That's cool that you're able to do that. So, any last things that you guys want to say about your experience? I don't know, it was a great experience. I loved it, it was awesome. Will you guys go back again? Oh yes, the coaches are amazing. I would, like, they're the best coaches I've ever had. Yes, I yes, I would go back. I love the coach so much. <laughs> the coach is great. <laughs> I love the people that I met there and they were so nice to me. It was like my first camp and there were some older girls too, but everyone was so helpful. And they just made me feel more comfortable and more confident and like, okay, this is fun. Yeah. I feel like the girls really like, even they understand, they understand that we're all deaf and we all like, I am like one of, I can hear more than most of the people there and they understand that. They're like, they're not rude to me that I can hear more. They're all really open with everybody's case. like. Some that I don't sign, they're, they'll come over and they'll talk to me and they'll explain what's happening because they understand. They've been in our position before, which is really nice. Right. And I really love that about the camp. Everyone just wanted to find a way. They didn't care, like, if you're, you know, deaf or not, let's just communicate. <laughs> or if you sign or you can't sign or it doesn't matter. That's awesome. All right, well, thank you guys so much for the time. It was really awesome getting to talk to you and learn about your experience. Uh, and for those interested in learning about the U.S. Deaf Women's and men nas Men's National Teams, you can head over to usdeafsoccer.com. Thanks so much.